It is Wednesday, and you know what that means. It is time for a Waterfowl Wednesday, and we are going to be talking about three decoy spreads that will never fail you. Duck season is still a little ways away, but I am pretty excited about it already. And that's a little bit out of the norm, but it's okay. I'm gonna contain that excitement and try to channel some of it to teach you guys about some decoy spreads. You guys ask me a lot of questions about the decoy spreads that I like to use, why I use the decoy spreads that I use, and we are going to cover that today. And I'm also gonna give you guys some helpful tips and advice for when you're setting decoys. If you guys are interested in helping support the channel, I've got hats and shirts on the website. I've only got a couple of these charcoal and white Mallards Bro hats left. I've got a few of the Realtree Timber. These are some of my favorites. All the the uh, all of this logo hats they've all got that puff embroidery it looks really good and this is probably one of my favorite hats i've ever come out with so got a few of those left we've got tons of the cryptic you guys seem to eat up the cryptic hats so we got a bunch of those and we've got the max five hats i don't have any of these in stock at the moment but i will be working on that soon and let you guys know when those hats are back in stock so thank you for everybody who's been placing orders it means a lot to have you guys support and it really helps me out with making these videos and if you guys are wearing your merch and catching fish or doing anything like that go ahead and send me a picture on instagram or facebook or snapchat and then maybe we can get them reposted and showing it off to everybody there are three things that i ask myself before every hunt and the first one is where am i hunting Am I hunting a pond, a lake, a marsh, or a field? That determines how I set my decoys. The second one is where is the wind coming from? That's a very helpful thing to know because the ducks and geese will always land going into where the wind is blowing from. So the wind is blowing this way, ducks and geese will fly into the wind and land that way. The third thing I ask myself is where is the blind going to be? Because sometimes, the conditions are always perfect for the spot that the birds want to be and you end up having to hunt a funky wind. So if the blind is right here, but the wind is coming from the side, you're going to have to set your decoys differently than if the wind was at the back of the blind and the ducks and geese were finishing coming to you. So those are three things I always ask myself to determine how I'm going to set my decoys. I've got some paper with me today and we're going to draw out a few scenarios of the three decoy spreads that I tend to always use regardless of where I'm hunting and what I'm hunting, whether it's ducks or geese, they work pretty much the same and they never fail. I know I've made videos on decoy spreads in the past, but you know, sometimes people don't see those old videos. So we'll just go ahead and make another one here and you guys will get the gist. So regardless of where you're hunting, these decoy spreads are gonna be interchangeable. So we'll just go ahead and talk about those decoy spreads right now, and then I'll get into different scenarios with them later on in the video. So the first decoy spread is the U shape. Wow, that's nothing new. Every waterfowl hunter knows about the U-shaped decoy spread. So basically, you're going to just toss your decoys out and make like a horseshoe with it, basically. So you're going to just toss them out, boom, 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 kind of in the shape of a U, okay? So what that does is, if the wind is coming from that way, the ducks and geese will land right here, coming straight into the wind. This gives them a nice pocket to land. So you're basically blocking off over here, blocking off over here and saying, hey, come land in the middle of us because this is where the party's at. That is the U shape. Now, the next one is the J hook. That is one that I use a lot and I generally like to use this one when I'm hunting a crosswind. So basically, let's say the wind is coming from this way, okay? So the wind is blowing that way and our blind is right here. So basically the J hook is just like the U but a little differently. I like to run my decoys straight line against the blind and then hook them out like that, okay? So basically you got a tree line or something, you got an edge here, some kind of thing that you can run a, a line of decoys down. So you got your decoys boom, 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 boom. You got that J hook, leaving that pocket for the ducks and geese to land in right there. So that is the J hook. Now, I like to use this one primarily on crosswind days. If I've got the wind at my back, I'm gonna just use a basic horseshoe. Now, this last one is one that I use every now and then. 
I usually start using it after like the horseshoe doesn't necessarily work out. And so what I like to do is something called the W spread. And with the W, you basically make a W with your decoys. So you'll toss them out and boom, 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 boom. You get the general idea. You're making that W shape with your decoys. And what this does is it leaves a pocket for them to land here, but it also leaves a pocket for them to land there. And sometimes they also just like to land out a little farther and they'll land on those decoys that are kind of on that tip of the point on that W. So it kind of opens up the spread a little bit, it gives them a little bit more options for where to land. And I, it's, it works. So wind's coming from that way, they'll land here, they'll land there, they'll land there, they'll kind of land wherever. So this generally works pretty well too. But I like basics. I like just using this one and this one for the most part. I don't generally adjust the decoys into the W until birds aren't really working that great. So that's my one of my first things I do to adjust. Now the fourth one, I didn't say four in the title, but I'll give you guys a bonus one. That's what I like to call pods. Now the pods, it's something that is pretty versatile no matter where you go. And you can use any of the formations that we talked about and just do pods with them. So let's say you're doing the U shape pattern. Well, you'll just do a pod of decoys over here, maybe a pod of decoys right here, and then some over here, and some over here, and then some down here. So basically, you're just kind of breaking up the outline, and you're just doing a couple decoys here, a couple here, a couple here, a couple here, instead of just packing them all in tight. So pods also work, you know, you got a pond or something, and you throw five of your decoys over here, couple over here, couple over there, you know, and it just kind of breaks up that uniform shape of the decoys and it might look a little more natural to the birds. So that is something else that I like to do with my decoy spreads. So now here's an example of a farm pond with the U shape and the J shape decoy spreads. Okay. So when the wind's at your back, you'll want to go ahead and use the U shape. So I like to line the bank tight to the bank with the decoys and have a few of them come out over here, leaving that kill hole and the ducks and geese go right there. Now rotate this here. We got the wind coming from the same direction, but maybe we can't hunt that side. So we have to hunt a crosswind on this pond. Same thing. I'm going to line the bank with those decoys, but then hook it out to the side. And it's going to make kind of like a U shape, but one side against the bank is going to be a lot longer. And that's going to open up this little hole right here in front of the blind. Ducks and geese will come into the wind, land, and you'll be shooting them right out of the blind there. On a marsh, generally there's a dike or a row of cattails or something. So this is kind of like your section of the marsh. You got cattails. Okay. So you got cattails and then you're going to just be hiding in the cattails right here. So what I like to do, wind at the back, same thing, we'll just run a horseshoe. Boom, 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 boom. Ducks and geese will land right there. But if there's a crosswind, same thing, except I'll hug these decoys tight against the cattails and then hook it out and around and leaving a hole right there. Ducks and geese will land right there. Hopefully you guys are able to make a little bit of sense out of these uh, drawings and sketches that I'm doing, but the basics remain the same. As long as your hide is good, your decoy spread, as long as there's a place for those birds to land, it will not matter. I like to funnel them into where I want them with the decoys. That's what I like to do. Your hide is the most important. If you're not hidden, no matter which way you set these decoys, it will not matter, okay? So you need to make sure your hide is as buttoned up as it can be and then use the decoys to funnel the birds into where you want them in front of the blind. Here's an example. We've got our blinds right here and we are on a pond. Okay, we got a nice bank right here, kind of a little smooth thing going on. Let's say the wind is coming at our back. Our hide, it's phenomenal. Like the birds are not gonna be able to see us. We are brushed in tight, nobody's peeking. Everything is great. I want the birds to land right here because we got four guys in this blind ready to roll some ducks in that kill hole. 
if they're over landing over here, well, this guy and this guy and this guy, they can't shoot over there. You got one guy. So you want to use your decoys to funnel them into the kill hole. Okay. So what I would do in this situation, perfect wind at the back, I would go ahead and start by tossing just a few decoys right here in front of the blinds. Okay. So there's a good start. Now we got our wind at our back. So this is perfect. We want to block off this side because we don't want those birds skirting us. We want them, if they're going to land out here, we want to be able to shoot them. At least one guy will have a shooting opportunity here and it's going to be a good shot opportunity because here's a big one that I did not mention. Forty yards. That is the maximum distance I put my decoys out. If it's past those decoys, that's an unshootable shot. You're going to wound a bird or you're going to completely miss. So use these end decoys, put them at 40 yards, and then you will know when those birds are in the kill hole and at a good shootable distance. So right here, we made this basic horseshoe. We went out 40 yards or so. Sometimes I don't even go that far. Sometimes in a pond, I'll go maybe 20. So we got this, put those out at 40. These decoys are funneling these birds that are going to be landing into our kill hole. Okay, so pretty basic, calling, 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 birds, 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 death, 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 death. I forgot to talk about spinners, so here we go. We got spinners, we're gonna put them here and here, okay? Close to the blind on the U, we're gonna funnel, use those spinners to funnel those birds down into the kill hole. Same thing if you got a, a bubbler or some kind of motion decoy, put it out in the middle where you want those birds to land. That's where the most motion is gonna be, and that's where the birds are gonna to wanna to go, is where the most motion is. Same thing with a jerk rig, I put it right in the front. I hope this video helps you guys out next season with your decoys. Don't overthink it. Just use those decoys to funnel the birds into where you want them, in front of the blinds, and in that kill hole. Don't overthink it. Make sure your hide's are good, and then you should be all set. Use some motion decoys if you need to. If there's no wind, that's kind of a tough situation. You can use any decoy spread you want, but the motion is the biggest thing. I wanted to keep it short and sweet and tell you guys three decoy spreads that never fail. You can just follow those guidelines using those decoys to funnel them, those birds into where you want them to be and you will be good to go. If you guys want a hat like this one or any of the other ones I talked about earlier, there's a link down in the description. Go check it out, help support the channel. It means a lot to have you guys place an order. So go ahead and send me pictures if you're wearing merch and doing stuff, let me know. We can start reposting them on Instagram or Facebook or something. So you can follow me on my social media. I've got Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, and Facebook. Follow me on there and stay up to date with what's going on. But that is all I've got for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will catch you on the next one.